when starting a conversation with someone at an event, um, I find um, a good way to kind of get a personal hook with someone is to maybe just gauge what they're doing and something you can find common ground to talk about. So if someone's going through a shopping centre, if there's an event in a shopping centre, you can talk to them, oh, have you been shopping today? Or what did you buy? Oh, that's really nice. Um, and get them to talk about something like that. Or if they look like they're quite interested in some of the arts and crafts and events, um, ask them if they'd like to have a go at making something and kind of focus on something where you can both start a conversation and hold a conversation kind of equally about something. Using what's around me, for example, working at the villages, there are great examples when you'd be working, for example, where children are having their face painted and you would go up to someone and say, oh, they look, they look really great. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's this all about then, mate? And then off you go. You'll lead into it. It's, it's using what's around you to your advantage just to open the door. At the one in Leeds, at the White Rose Centre, we had a lot of freebies in terms of badges and buttons, etc. And if people did look like they were really looking at the posters and things like that, you mentioned the information. It, it's really useful, you know, balloons for the kids, that was a good one. Would your kid like a balloon? Oh yeah, that's drawing them in, isn't it? Before I say anything, um, I make sure I'm smiling. So I kind of have our open body language. Um, I think that's, that's a really big thing because so much, you know, nearly 80% of communication is non-verbal. Making conversation with people is a lot easier than people think. The, the hardest part is the thinking about it beforehand. If you think about it, when you actually start a conversation, it takes less than half a second. But you spend a couple of minutes worrying about it or deciding what to say. So yeah, just say, are you out shopping today? Or, oh, I love that little outfit your child has on. And just be natural and be yourself. It was a bit disheartening when people first started ignoring me. Um, but then I realised if I'm off on a busy day and somebody's trying to stop me in the street, I'm probably not likely to stop either. So you kind of got to get into their mindset and realise actually then it's not anything towards you, it's just that they've got a busy day or they, they're a bit shy, you know, so you have to just um, not take it to heart and just carry on with the next person. If they don't want to talk to us, we, you know, we shouldn't be offended by that. Um, generally people will just kind of say no or they'll just kind of walk on. If you were to get bothered about that, then you'll miss the next person and they probably might be someone that's really interested. Events tend to go through sort of um, really busy times and times when there's either not many people around or people are already in conversations or it's a very quiet time. And during those times it can be a bit demoralising if you're just standing there thinking I should be having conversations and there's no one to talk to. So in those times you can go and talk to other volunteers, see how they found it, perhaps share some tips, um, some stories, find out how other people are doing, go and have a look at some of the other things that are going on at the event um, or go and grab a cup of tea, coffee and make sure you're okay. If you are taking it personally, that's, I think, a cue to either take a break or talk to a colleague, talk to another volunteer to sort of like say, oh, yeah, have a bit of a whinge or, you know, cheer up or whatever, or maybe just, you know, take a, a long break, depending. Think about how you could start a conversation at the event you were volunteering at and what part of the event you might like to work in. Think about how you would feel if no one wanted to speak to you and how you would cope.